all of these images from Google. Um, I tried to use ones that were representative of um, the actual um, like what you'll see in the manga chapters. I didn't try to use like because some of them can be very misleading. So I tried to like get a feel of what you would actually see in the manga. Um, Well, I recorded this video once, but my mic decided to unselect itself from uh, Streamlabs. So let's just do a quick voiceover. This is my top five manga. Um, it's specifically villainess manga. Um, so let's get into it. This is number five. Um, today, the villainess has fun again. It's rated 4.6. Um, the author's name will be on the screen. It is a um, more, it's like one of the most lighthearted ones on this list. <clears throat> um, it's uh, reincarnated. Um, this is the summary. My friend stole my boyfriend and then dared to hand me a wedding invitation with a smile. Ha! I'll bla I had a blast enjoying my revenge and came home and fell asleep, but when I woke up, I was in the body of a villainess of a romance fantasy novel who has everything. Appearance, assets, and intelligence. The only thing the girl lacked was the insight to judge a man. Throw that beep prince away to the main female lead and let us just enjoy the luxury of the power and money. The villainess is happy today is another alternative titles um i'll put the genre and the authors on the screen real quick for it, um, for the names of the author slash artist. So sorry about that. Um, this one has a rating of 4.6. Um, and it's lighthearted and it's kind of like a palate cleanser if you read the harder, uh, the darker stuff. The next one, number four and number one are going to be the darker ones. Um, number one is probably the darkest. Number four isn't as dark. But yeah, that's been, um, um, it's kind of also a reverse harem. Like all the second, all the, the other male leads kind of fall in love with her slowly. Um, but it's very innocent. Um, yeah. And, um, sh it's really fun. Really good. I love the characters. It's comic comedic too. A little bit. But yeah, let's go on to, um, number four. This is number four. This is I Want to Be You Just for a Day. It's rating 4.4. It probably deserves 4.5 or 4.6. The author and artist are the same. I will put that up on the screen. Beautiful artwork and amazing writing. Uh, great storytelling, honestly. It's probably one of the most um, unique of the store writing. Um, so I like this one a lot because the females, um, in this one actually like, uh, they get along and they support each other and you don't see a lot of that. Usually it's, um, uh, females fighting over a guy and stupid stuff like that. It is a fantasy, a mystery, a romance, and a webtoon. Please... Um, I'm trying my best to find like places to buy it so I can support the author. So please, um, if you can, help support the author and the artist. Um, I think this one is on Tapas or Webtoon. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, this, Medea is the purple hair and Lady Psyche is the, um, they're both ladies. Um, Lady Psyche is, um, the blonde. Um. They both come from uh, abusive backgrounds. Um, Lady Medea 
wins. Um, it is so she is supposed to marry the crown prince. It was um, by the um, it was like from her father and the emperor, and then the crown prince kind of meddles and makes her do a contest with Lady Psyche. And um, she wins all three contests, and then the crown prince, um, Lady Medea, wins all three contests. And then the crown prince goes, um, does something really shitty where he has somebody else announce that she didn't win, like a high priest or something. Um, so um, Lady Psyche ends up becoming the crown princess. Um, they're not married yet, but she's like the fiance. Um, and she is very naive and ignorant and. Um, one day she went to the temple to pray alone. Medea snuck in and they fell into a pool of water together and they switched bodies. Medea has a lot of enemies because of her family. And um, so um, Lady Psyche has a really hard time trying to survive in her body. Um, and Lady Psyche's body is very difficult to kill because she has holy powers and they're very rare, super rare. And that's, I think, why they want her is because of her holy powers. Only the imperial family, some some descendants can use it, and the holy church descendants can use it. Um, it's um, it's number three, but uh, that's only because, like, honestly, the I love the art. It's beautiful, but I like the art, and the one art is better to me. Um, and number three, but they're both friggin' beautiful. And they both have so much detail in the clothes and stuff. Um, I like this one because eventually Medea and Psyche kind of work together. And instead of girls against girls, it's like girls teaming up and actually helping each other. Um, but yeah. Um, and they both bring things that the other doesn't have. Like, they both even each other out. Uh, Medea does things that Psyche wouldn't have the stomach to do, and Psyche um, makes Medea's like relationships better in her own house. So, um, and some other things. Psyche brings a lot more to the table than just that. But I don't want to give too many spoilers. Um, and that's that's um, going to be um, rated a four point four, and it's I want to be you just for a day. Um, the Count daughter, Lady Psyche, is a soul loved by everyone. She usually gets anything she wants and she stole everything from me. I want to be her just for a day. This is from um, Medea's perspective. Um, it's probably one of the better stories on this list, I think. Um, number five was um, more lighthearted and fun, Palette Cleanser. This one's also one of the darker ones, number four. Uh, but I hope you like it. Um, feel free to leave me comments down below about how you feel about each one. This is from my personal opinion. It's not going to match yours. If you don't like it, if it's not for you, I can't help you. If you liked it better than uh, my number three slot out of all the villainous anime I've <laughs> read, <laughs> then I'm sorry. It's just we have different tastes, okay? But it's super, super good. And it deserves a 4.5 or a 4.6 at least, not a 4.4. All right. Moving on to a number. It's going to be... Um, the villainess is a marionette. Um, this one is, she, uh, is being executed. And so she goes back in time and, um, re-inhabits her body before she's executed. It's rated 4.6. Um, the authors will be on the screen. And so will the artists. Um, the art is phenomenal um it's one of the few that i take um uh, screenshots of i i read manga like i go through toilet paper so much um it it helped me learn how to read um it i have really bad dyslexia so if i didn't have this in anime i probably would not have uh, been able to read very well um it, it's been really helpful but my god, the art is amazing in this one. Um, here's the story. Sienna, well, the synopsis. The Imperial Princess had was known as the most beautiful woman in the Empire. She was a woman who knew nothing but evil and luxury. However, she was detested, uh, destined for ruin. She would be used as a chess piece by her younger brother, secure his throne, and killed by her crazy husband. 
Um, there is like flashes of abuse. It's very hinted at. Um, it's and there's some shots of her being like abused, like um, like you can see the bruises and her cowering in fear from her husband. Those are flashbacks that they're triggering to you. Don't read this one. The male lead, which is this guy right here, this hottie patati, the black hair. He's a duke. Um, he has suffered a childhood trauma, so he hates being touched by people. She was obsessed with him. Um, and kind of scared him away, and then she started distancing herself and from him when she reincarnated back a few years before her death. And um, then he started to fall in love with her because she was treating him with like more respect and not as an obsession or anything. It's rated 4.6. It's a fantasy isekai romance, and um, she had to change things before she became that Sienna, the Sienna that died. So it's basically her trying to um, circumvent her death, and um, her brother has a very heavy brother complex when she starts changing um, and becoming more interesting. So yeah, he's very possessive, yandere kind of weirdness. But that is this one. Um, it's called The Villainess is a Marionette. It's beautiful. Probably one of my favorite arts. The clothing detail is amazing. And this is number three. On to number two. And then our honorable mentions. Alright, so number two. I'll be the matriarch in this life. Um, I really like the child reincarnation ones or the going back in time to be a child. It's really interesting to me. I don't know why. Um, I'll put the artist and author up on the screen. I got all of these images from Google. Um, I tried to use ones that were representative of um, the actual, um, like what you'll see in the manga chapters. I didn't try to use like, because some of them can be very misleading. So I tried to like get a feel of what you would actually see in the manga. Um, maybe in um, another video I'll do... Um, all the child ones I'm reading, um, like, um, if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments down below and don't be afraid to like, um, tell me what you think about any of these on here. Again, this is just my opinion. Your opinion may differ. You may like some more than mine. It was really hard to put these in a list like this, except for number one and number two, the rest were really hard to sort. This is number two. It is amazing. The story's good. The art's good. I love everything. Her family, so she, um, she is, um, she dies in the, and goes back in time to re-inhabit her body as a child. Um, her family had fallen apart at that time and she was kicked out of the family. She was like the only one smart enough to hold on to it. And then her uncle gambling debts kind of sunk the family. Just to say how, see how big his gambling debts were, her family was as powerful if not, it, maybe a little bit more powerful than the imperial family, the royal family, right? She kept, her family kept them in check. They had this, like, honorable um, pact between them. Like, every carriage is searched um, if it goes into the imperial palace, except for um, her family's Lombardi's um, carriages. They're not allowed to be searched, okay? So that's how powerful they were. Um, there is, um, the male lead is the second prince and he's only introduced in a few chapters right now, um, because she, of uh, reasons, story reasons. I'm trying not to spoil too much, just, uh, general, um, general lies the first couple chapters for you, right? Um, Fortia was reincarnated as a, the illegitimate child of the richest family in the empire. She had thought that everything would go well in the future, but her father had passed away. Her relatives left at her at the doorsteps and the horror, honorable family she was so proud of was completely ruined. But is this real? She drank a little, a lot, and was hit by a carriage. When she opened her eyes again, she was seven years old? Question mark. Moreover, the second prince, who was the enemy of her family in her previous life, is following her around like a dog. Second prince, Tia, you're prettier than me, Tia said, replies, are you kidding me right now? The per second prince replies, no, I mean it. All right, both this, and then it goes back to narrating the summary. All right, both the second prince and the family are mine. In this life, um, and there's more, uh, there's more, uh, 
chapter names, um, what the manga is called. Um, so this one is kind of like asceticism of a bookworm. You'll like it if you like that one. Um, she kind of creates things with her um, knowledge from Earth. Um, and she's really smart. And um, her her mother was a dancer and her she died. Um, her father is the least powerful of the siblings, um, but he's also the smartest of the siblings. So he just doesn't want the power. He doesn't want to be like in charge. He wants to live his everyday life. Um, so she goes back in time and tries to like kind of put her and her father in a better position um, and stop her uncle from ruining her family. It's super good. Her grandfather's in charge right now. Um, she has a few uh, nieces and nephews and they all kind of take classes together. Um, and um, she's just trying to find a way to meet the prince to kind of get him on her side and try to save him. Um, because he's suffering some abuse right now because he's just a child too. And he is um, the second prince. And he, I think he was born of a concubine or a maid or something. Nobody important. But yeah. So um, it's it's adorable. Um, it's clever. It's beautifully drawn. Beautifully written. I absolutely adore this one. That's why it's number two. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more of this kind of child um, reincarnated one. I have a few others that I really like. I just put this one here because, um, it's, it is technically, um, she has to do some kind of like, it's not like, it's the least villainous out of this one, honestly, but it's, um, it kind of still fits. The first honorable mention we have is going to be, um, the princess and prince of traitor. This one's also kind of less, like, she's not really a villain, but to her family, she kind of is considered one, I would say, just because um, she's going against what they want, but she's doing it to save the entire kingdom. She is um, the seventh princess, I believe. Um, and so the, the gentleman next to her is a homunculus. They're treated like slaves. Um, they're very poorly treated. And um, in her first life before she dies, this is the first couple of chapters, it's just a lot of information. If you don't want spoilers... Um, on this one, skip the honorable mentions. It's only the first 10 chapters. I'm not going to give you too much information. It's just very unique. Um, so this one is, um, so what happens is this male lead is technically a villain. He, um, he's able, he's a monculus. They can use magic. And then the humans, which is her, use alchemy. Um, a homunculus can't reproduce. So they're kind of used as like sex toys for the royal family. Each royal family member can appoint one personal guard. And it's a homunculus tradition. He can break the oath and nobody could really enforce an oath on him. So she used all she could to, like, capture him when she was reincarnated. So in the original, it, before she was reincarnated back a couple of years, um, he overthrew her family, killed almost all of them. Um, her youngest sister um, is batshit crazy. She becomes obsessed with him, um, helps him revolt and kill her whole family. Then she sneaks into the room where her sister is. Um, she's pregnant with like this weird experiment of Philosopher's Stone with his seed. Somehow she was able to impregnate herself with his, um, even though he can't, you know, it's like a weird experiment. Anyways, so Rose goes into her room, right? Um... And she um, says, hey, take this poison. He's going to drag you out in the streets and kill you. Even though she has the best uh, relationship with homunculus, because she never took a personal light. And she treated them with courtesy and respect. Her mother didn't believe homunculus should be treated this way. Um, so she learned from her mother and treated them with respect and tried to, like, honor them in a way. So he wasn't really going to kill her. He was in love with her because she was different from all the rest. Um... Rose killed her because she was jealous of her and she didn't want her stealing her man. So he comes back into the room, sees that she's dead, sees Rose, kicks Rose out. Um, we don't know what happens to Rose. He asks, he struggles to find ways to bring her back to life, right? Um, her mentor, her alchemy mentor, comes in as the last resort. And he doesn't know that, I don't think. And says, hey, I can reverse time by seven-ish years or something. And, but you won't remember. It'll be centered around her. Only she will. And he says that's fine. Um, he allows it to happen. And it's like, as, as time is being reversed, he's like, I hope you choose me in your next life. Because he really did love her. 
um, she does choose him as her personal light and she treats him with utter respect um, even though he did uh, well, he didn't kill her but Rose did and now she's trying to become the heir to the throne to make the kingdom a better place for both homunculus and um, humans um, so that the revolt does not happen right and that the hundreds of people don't die I'll put all the information on the screen for this one and we'll go to the next honorable mention this one's really good it's the princess and prince a traitor it's 4.3 um the honorable mentions i just didn't know where to put them so i'm putting them in honorable mentions because they deserve to be mentioned honorable mentions is a villain is a good match for a tyrant this one is more she's pretending to be a villain because um he's a tyrant and he needs her to pretend to be a villain because lots of people want to kill them so as long as she can pretend to be a villainess um she should be safe so he kind of teaches her how and sets up scenarios where she can um they do fall in love it's more of a cutesy one it's less dark it gets dark later on honestly and it's on honorable mentions for a different reason than the one before this i didn't know where to put it because i'm not sure how i feel about the later chapters i don't really necessarily like where the story is going right now but where the story is going is very ambiguous right now too so we'll see this is a summary um and the author and artist are the same for this one. Um, I feel, uh, one day the tyrant Istan sent a marriage proposal to Cecile. She got dragged to the Empire unwillingly, but when she saw the Emperor's face, she had a change of heart. You're quite the hottie, aren't you? She liked her husband, and her husband eventually liked her back, too. To ha live happily ever with her husband, uh, her tyrant husband, does Cecile need to become a villainess far worse than the tyrant? So there's a lot of weird magic stuff that goes on in this one, and it's it's good. It's just mm, it's more it's lighthearted, but the the chapters do get darker um, eventually. So I don't know how dark because they're not very dark yet, but there's lighthearted moments heavily mixed in with the darkness. So this one I consider a filler one for me, but it might not be a filler one for you. Just the later chapters. This one is really funny in the beginning. Really funny. Especially how they meet. Alright, and now we'll go on to number one. And does my voice box hurt or what? Alright, number one. The way to protect the female lead's older brother. 4.7 rating. Alright. This one, the art is gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous. As beautiful as number three. Just different. Um, so here's the synopsis. I actually took possession of someone in a 19 plus reverse harem novel. The manga itself is not 19 plus, I wouldn't say. It is very, it's the darkest one on this list though. The problem is that I became Roxanne Archon, the older sister of the sub villain. My damn father kidnapped the heroine's brother. Now is the only thing left to meet a terrible end from the vengeance of the heroine. <clears throat> but what if I can avoid that horrible development? What if I can avoid it? I'm also interested in this toy, she says. I'll protect you until you get out of here safely, she says. The heroine's brother, Cassian Pendolin, will definitely be able to pay me back later. All right, so this one is my favorite. It is beautiful. My mom it was an art teacher, so, like, I love me some good art, let me tell you. Um, the story is amazing. It's more on the side of Games of Thrones. Um... Each of the families has a special ability. So each of the, the families has special abilities. I honestly forget her family's special ability. I honestly do. Um, but I can name two of them. Two of the families. So the Melee's family, which is the brother uh the brother of the female leads um that she saves right um she makes so their family um they kidnap humans and they call them toys right if they keep them alive some of the family members are obsessed with torturing them some just want to kill them some um uh, use them i think for sex but i'm not sure um it's kind of like the homunculus situation um weirdly enough she she makes cassie she's never had a toy before her character's not usually interested in it, right? So she makes um, Cassius her toy. And her father gives it to her because she's, like, in love with the um, 
she's in love with the, the like she's never had a toy before not in love with anything what am i talking about the, even though there's butterflies in this picture this this game is probably not butterflies and rainbows all right um so the heroine and there is she's technically the female this is the female lead of the manga the female lead they're talking about is the heroine um her family special power which is related to the cassius she's cassius's sister um her family special power is healing or giving energy through sex um so cassius can do it through a kiss um i don't know if the female lead can but a lot of guys, it's basically the, it was a reverse harem because a lot of guys were obsessed with her power and wanted her for her power, right? Um, so she um, saved Cassius's life so the female lead wouldn't go crazy on Derry and destroy her entire family. Um, the artwork is beautiful. Um, so she is um, secretly trying to hatch these butterflies. It's a project of hers. Um, there's three different kinds of powers. It just depends on how you catch them. They're demonic butterflies and they feed off of the host. Um, sh sh this is her older, I believe, and this is her younger. So she did age up a little bit in the right hand photo and in the left hand photo, sh she's still younger. She just hatched the butterflies, I believe. Um, but there is a um a brother uh two of her brothers are kind of obsessed with her in a creepy way so just want to let you know that there is like that and dion especially is very interesting um it's on i'm waiting for season two to come out um it's i've read 36 chapters of it that's what season one was and season two ended on a giant cliffhanger and um this is what spiraled me down the rabbit hole of reading all these villainous mangas because i cannot wait for it I'm obsessed with it. It's probably one of the best mom I've ever, ever read. And you can disagree with me. That's fine. Shout it in the comments. Shout it to the world. Shout it off the rooftops. But I'm telling you, you're wrong. <laughs> Just like I'm wrong, right? So it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's very, it's um, gender neutral. You don't have to be a girl to like this one. There's not a lot of romance. Um, also the isekai part, there's not a lot of isekai. Um, it's hinted at briefly, but it's more of like, um, how will I survive kind of manga, right? Cassius is a fucking gem and I love him. He's adorable. Um, I, and, um, she basically is trying to save Cassius's life so she doesn't die and her whole family doesn't die, right? She could give a shit about her family. Her families are pieces of shit, but she wants to live. So she saves Cassius. Um, and yeah. And it's like political drama intrigue. Um, her family is the Lord of the Underworld, basically. They're the dark side. Um, I think Cassius' family is more like light holiness and church. Um, but she, like her family kind of rules the black market, the dark side, assassinations. Um, her brothers are both um, assassins. One, Dion is more of like, I would say like the mountain or the hound. Not really an assassin, more of like a giant killing machine and um her younger brother that follows her around more um with the blue eyes not the red eyes um he is more of an assassin um but yeah it's so good it's so good um i can't wait for more god bless this art artist god bless this author you guys are a one hit wonder um the demonic butterflies I'll tell you one of their powers, if you hatch them a certain way by feeding them a certain amount of blood, they're kind of like locusts, so they'll eat anything you want. But they do survive off the host's blood. So hatching a certain, you can only hatch a certain amount of the butterflies because you'll slowly die. And, um, yeah. So she hatches them. It's really difficult to do, really rare. And it does make her family proud. And that's like only the first couple chapters. I'm trying not to swell too deep into it. You guys give this one a chance. Give them all a chance. Support the authors. I'm going to try to find them. I'll be a matriarch in my next life. Because um, I bought this one. All um, I bought all the chapters of this this first one on Tapas, I believe. To help support the author. Hopefully Tapas supports the author. I'm assuming so since they sell it, right? Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Please give it a like and a share. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what I got wrong. Okay? 
All right. I hope you have a great day. Peace.